What's up, world? It's your boy, Lanye. 24 years free. So I'm going to have a throwback episode. Tell y'all about a story that, that happened when I first got into prison. I won't say I was in there four months. But before I get into the story, I got I to gotta preface it by telling you how this stuff works in regards to prison. So when you first go to prison, if you have a strong enough charge, you know, assault, murder, that kind of thing, you start off at a level four. So the levels are level four, level three, level two, and level one. Level four being the most dangerous. So this is where all your killers at. This is where your, this is where you got your killers. This is where you got your mass murderers. You know what I'm saying? It's dangerous. It's, it's where the most dangerous people in California are housed at the level four. Uh, at the particular level four I was at was Calipat. Now anybody that's ever done time know Calipat. Calipatria is it's up there with the ones that you hear like the Pelican Bays and the, the Quintons back in the 80s. It, it, it was that dangerous for real, for real. I would say... Calipatria averaged about three stabbings a day on the yard I was on. And that's not including the fight. I'm just talking about the people getting stabbed to death. It was three a day. We would have lockdowns that were the short version of a lockdown would be six months. Which in a lockdown in the Calipat means that you're in a, a box for six months with another person. You're not going nowhere for six months in a box. Think of a closet. So the reason why this is a throwback story because I want to tell you a story about my time at Calipat. Again, I had just been there four or five months. But I had established a reputation of somebody who was one of the guys that wasn't necessarily with the drama. So they see me coming and see me going, going to church, going to canteen, going to work, coming back, showering, locking it up, you know, getting it going in the cell. And a uh, few people started to speak to me. So there was this one particular white guy whose name is escaping me right now, but I probably shouldn't say his name anyway. He was a veteran and he was kind of like in the mix, you know, he was white, so he had to roll with the whites and he had to do certain things and carry hair on from the visiting room and do certain things because of because of his race. But me and him had gotten to a rapport where we would high and by. He knew I was not in his way. I wasn't in his way. So we respected each other's space and we would tip each other's, you know, tip hats at each other as we passed on our way to do what we were doing. So one day, it was a Thursday, I'll never forget it. Yard had just opened up. And the way it works is that everybody in prison knows what stabbings are going to happen before the stabbings happen. The only people who don't know about the stabbings are the people who are about to get stabbed. That's normally how it works. This particular day, they tell me it's going to be a stabbing. The whites got to take care of some business. Now, I don't know who, but I know some whites got to take care of some business. So I come out to cell, I'm getting ready to go to the yard. And this particular white guy, old vet, he used to wear these red, white, and blue ribbons on his hat. Had glasses, tall, like six feet. He see I see him in the day room, and he's basically greeting everybody he sees. He's like, oh man, man, it's good to see you again. Yes, this and this and that. And he sees somebody else, he said speaks to them. So I don't know. I'm thinking to myself, maybe he getting transferred to another prison. You know, maybe he got some good news. Maybe he, you know, found out something. I'm not sure. At some point, he locks eyes with me. And again, we cool. When he locks eyes with me, everybody in prison called me Tucker. When he locked eyes with me, he goes, Tucker! And he walks right up to me and he's kind of excited and, you know, uh, he's happy to see me. 
He wants to speak to me. I don't know where this is going. He goes, man. Reaches out his hand, shakes my hand. He says, man, I just want you to know, man, you're a real good dude, man. You know, you've always been stand up. I see you taking care of your business, man. Stay on the path you're on, man. Stay doing what you're doing, man. You're going to get out of here. Don't worry, man. It's going to be all right. It's going to work out for you, man. It's been nice meeting you. It's been nice knowing you. And, you know, I'm kind of like dumbfounded. I'm, you know, like deer in headlights. Like, I hear everything you're saying, but, you know, what's all this about? You know, you, you're going to level three? Like, you, you up for transfer? Like, what? So he said all of his congratulatory things to me that I was on the right path, that my, you know, that my program was cool, that I was always nice to him. And uh, he was like, man, it's, it's been nice knowing you, man. So he goes out to yard. And I'm getting ready to go out to yard, too, because it's yard time. Now, I had already been given the heads up that somebody was going to get stabbed today and it was going to be the wife. So when, uh, before I could get too far on the yard, I could see in the distance the wife stabbing somebody. The way this works is they put the yard down. You see the gunshots. They're shooting. They're making sure that the people who are doing the stabbing get away from the body that they're stabbed. But I'm at, this is all at a distance. So I'm down on the ground. The security rush out there. They handcuff everybody. They spray everybody. They call it a medical. So I start focusing on who the victim was. And I see that hat with the red, white, and blue ribbon on it. And it's on the ground. So when I see that's on the ground, I scoot over a little bit more. So I can get a better idea of who I'm dealing with. Was was the dude with the red, white, and blue hat, was he one of the aggressors? Or was he the victim? I scoot a little bit more. It was him who got stabbed. This was a real perplexing situation for me because most of the time people don't know that they're going to be the ones getting stabbed. But clearly this dude knew he was going to be stabbed that day. Not only did he know he was going to be stabbed that dude that day, but he had to have been saying his goodbyes because he knew he was going to die that day. So when I look back on that, it gives me a certain amount of pride to know that I was cool enough for somebody who knew that they were looking at their death day. They were looking at the Grim Reaper was on the other side of the door and they saw me. And wanted to give me some advice and tell me how to get out of prison. That I was, a, you know, kind to them and that I was doing the right thing. To, that I should stay on the right path, bro. If you out there in the universe, in the ether, wherever you ended up, whatever you, however your maker decided to do you after life, thank you for that advice. Rest in peace, yo. That prison shit is real, man. Hey, I'm just telling my truth. No extras. Also, I want to say, if you like anything you're hearing, subscribe, tell a friend, send me some topics. I got a lot of stuff to talk about, but I want to talk about what you want to hear. Yo, I'm your boy Lanye. Until the next time, 24 years free.